Hey guys, it's Riley, and I wanted to show you guys a little bit about my Charizard costume because I've had a lot of people ask questions about how things work. So, we're going to start with the hands. The hands are very simple. It's just a glove-like pattern. This is uh, made out of fleece. And um, the claws are also made out of fleece, so they're really flimsy. What I did is I cut off each of the fingers um, and then took a white piece of a triangle kind of shaped um, and hot glued it on. It's just all hot glue. And of course the edges are all sewn. So there's the hands. The feet. The feet is a uh, base. It's just made out of a tennis shoe. Just an old one that I had laying around. And um, to get the uh, pattern so I could cover it with the fabric, I um, took masking tape, taped over the whole thing, and then I um, cut the pattern off put the pattern on the, uh, the, fl the uh, fleece, traced around it, cut it out, and glued it on. This is all glued. And um, the feet, this one is, yeah, it's kind of coming apart, but each of the toes is just made out of foam. And um, just glued on to the front of the shoe and covered up with fabric. Super simple. Here's the tail. The tail is very fun because I found this kind of feathery boa stuff to give it the uh, fiery kind of look. Um, throughout the entire uh, tail, there is a um, metal wire. You can see the metal wire. It goes through from the very tip of the tail all the way to about here, actually. I just ran out of uh, the wire, and that's why it doesn't go through the whole thing, otherwise I would make it go. Um, this is just, you know, two pieces of, again, the fleece just um, sewn together. And the very top, I attached a belt loop, so I can just slip it on and wear it. And um, then the uh, belt is covered by my shirt, so it looks like I have a tail. And now, the wings. There's probably a better way to do these wings. But what I did is the wings are actually made out of a uh, cardboard base. It's kind of beat up because I've been doing things to it. Um, it's just a piece of cardboard and it has these elastic straps so it acts like a backpack. Um, there is a uh, copper wire, you can see it's a really thick wire. What it does is it goes from the very tip of the wing, goes all the way across up to here, goes down and across my lower back and continues on all the way. The lower back um, the part across gives it support down there. I also have a thinner wire, the um, one that I um, first tried to use but it wasn't strong enough, that's also found in my tail. And that one is just follows the length again, except it goes across the top of my back because, again, I had, didn't have that much of that kind of wire. And then um, I took just a um, hoodie jacket, I cut holes in the back of it, slipped it over the wings so the wings can look like they're coming out of the back of the hoodie. And then simply you um, put it on like a backpack and then you zip up the front and there you go, you got your wings. The wings are all self-supported with this really thick wire and then um, this all, the um, fabric is glued, this edge was folded over and glued along the whole top and then the bottom edge is all sewn. And last but definitely not least is the head. Now, the head is made out of a base, a balaclava, which is also known, you know, just a ski mask. So it's really tight fitting to my face and um, enabled to um, make the jaw move up and down. There is, you find it somewhere in here. Yeah. There's a piece of elastic right here. Now, the elastic acts like uh, elastic, so it's able to go around my head. So if I put the um, head on, there is a piece of elastic that goes around my chin into the back of my head, and then there's another piece that goes from the jaw across the top of my head. So what that does is it keeps the um, lower jaw, or the form firm against my face, and then when um, the elastic will allow it to be stretchable. So when I open my mouth, the jaw will go up and down, and the elastic will pull it back up. So that's how that mechanical mechanism thingy works. The um, actual, um, all the uh, things like the um, horns, 
the eyebrows, you know, the actual muzzle, and the, um, the uh, toes in the feet is made out of foam. This foam is a green kind of foam. It's very squishy. This is called um, Airtex High Density Foam. You can see I have another pattern on here because I'm doing um, one of my friend's feet, which is um, to be finished eventually whenever I get around to it. Um, this stuff is a green, and um, you can find it in a lot of hobby kind of stores. And the, the thing about this kind of foam is that it doesn't wear out, it never gets moldy, it never gets, you know, ugly and yellow. Here is the kind of the same kind of foam. This kind of foam isn't as thick. It's a lot, th this um, one is actually thinner. This is a uh, three inch piece. It's a pretty thick piece. This is the same stuff, but it's not as high quality. And this stuff um, also will yellow and kind of wear out over time just because it's made to do that. That's why this stuff is cool and good. Then um, other kind of foam, this is the kind of foam you do not want to use. This is styrofoam. This is the kind of stuff that you'll find um, to, like, for like plants, like fake plants and stuff. It's really hard and, no, no, this is bad foam. This kind of stuff is like packing foam. You find in like boxes, you get electronics in or something. This stuff is similar to the stuff you want to use, except it's a little bit more rigid. It's, you can't really tell, but it's really kind of hard. They put glue like in the inside of this thing. So, I mean, you can use this if you have nothing else. But it's, I suggest you go um, pick up some the high density stuff. There's also the other kind of foam is um, craft foam, like children's craft foam. It's very thin. That kind of stuff is really stupid if you wanted to use that for um, any kind of construction. So that's just kind of the basic types of foam that I use. And all of the foam is glued right on to the, um, the balaclava. And then um, to uh, cover it, I have the same method again, just use the masking tape, tape it all out, cut it off, put it on the fabric, trace it, and cut it out, you've got your, fa your pattern. Um, and then the um, how to actually attach the fabric to the mask is all hot glued. The eyes, however, um, the eyes, this is a um, hard plastic, it's made out of a um, colander that I got at Walmart for like three bucks. You can see it's already been yeah, used for several eyes, I think I'll probably get two or three more two uses out of it, I think. And um, then that is all cut out with the Dremel tool because the stuff is really thick. You'll need a Dremel tool with an evil saw blade. And once you cut that all out, um, you can glue it on to get this um, see-through mesh stuff. This is actually um, something that's used for, uh, uh, like, you know, making pretty patterns. And you're sewing. It's crochet, I think. No, it's embroidery. Embroidery, thank you. Whatever that stuff is. And so it has tiny little holes in it. And what I do is I take marker and I just color on both sides so it makes it nice and dark. And then you can see through it. Let me show you maybe the camera if it'll cooperate today. Alright. Let's try to find the camera lens. There it is. You might be able to see, you might not, we'll see. And you will have better vision than this. It's just that the camera um, can't pick up the light that's coming through this thing. It filters light really well. Um, but if you like stare at a bright light when you're wearing the mask, you'll be kind of blinded because it just blinds you. Um, but it is fairly good vision. It may be not the best stuff in the world, but it works for my um, kind of thing because I needed a way to be able to see through um, blue and black and white like the eye because it's an anime style eye a lot of um, the eyes you'll have different layers and you can actually paint um, one of the outer blue colors and then you know have the black as you can see through well it wouldn't work for me and that stuff is usually made out of a very thin sheer see-through fabric that they use for like wedding dresses so um, that's just the method I use and I've been using that for my costumes ever since because I found that it works pretty well um, all this is, again, just covered with the um, fleece fabric. This is actually felt in here, though. And, and there you go. I think that's all. So if you have any more questions, I'll be glad to ask. You know, I'm glad you can just ask, and I'll be glad to help you out. And yeah, that's all for now. Stay tuned next time to see my newest project. But it's a secret.